Hello learners, as a tourism professional, it is important for you to know all those legal and quasi-legal regulations that concern the tourist trade in this country. The objective of this unit is to give learners all the important information that relates to the inbound and outbound travelers. Now let me introduce you to what is tourism regulation. It is an essential requirement on the part of a tourism professional to obtain and master comprehensive information on the regulations that affect tourism both directly and indirectly. Also important is the passing of this information on to the tourist. This will help to annul their unfounded fears regarding India as a prospective destination. The development and promotion of tourism in the country has largely been the responsibility of the Department of Tourism. It is sad that it has been functioning as a regulatory authority without any supporting legislation that specifically relates to tourism. As a result, it has not always been possible to ensure a coordinated development of the infrastructure and a uniform regulatory code for tourism. In this context, it is noteworthy that Asian and European countries which value their tourism potential have very successfully provided support and incentives to the tourism sectors by incorporating such features into a tourism act. Now what is the need for tourism regulations? Tourism regulations refer to either general government rules or guidelines specific to travel and hospitality industry. According to the United Nations World Tourism Organization, the purpose of travel legislation is to provide a regulatory framework for the proper development and management of tourism activities. Tourism regulations benefit travel consumers and organizations in receiving basic legal protection. These regulations also help in the conservation of natural resources and the preservation of cultural traditions of the destinations. Now let us learn about the inbound and outbound travel regulations. A traveler who is also a tourist is governed by the laws and regulations in force in the country which he or she visits. As tourism professional dealing with outbound tourist, it is important for you to obtain information about regions which your clients are intending to visit. Now the first regulation that we are doing is related to passport and visa requirements. A passport is an essential travel document for those who are traveling abroad for education, pilgrimage, tourism, business purposes, medical treatment and for family visits. Now what is a passport? Passport is a 
legal permission given by the government of the country to go outside the country. It is an identification document issued on behalf of President of India by the Ministry of External Affairs through the Regional Passport Officer. Officials responsible to issue passport are Regional Passport Officer, PRO of the Passport Office, Superintendent of the Passport Office and Assistant of Passport Office. A new passport can be issued with a validity of 10 years. If the passport is required urgently, there is Tatkal service under which the applicant gets passport within one to two, three days. It is extremely important for all the visitors except from Nepal, Bhutan and Bangladesh from abroad to possess a valid passport issued by their respective countries before they enter Indian territories through land, sea or air route. Now there are different kinds of Indian passports. Now what are they? First, normal passport. It is issued to an Indian citizen. It is navy blue in color. Then second, official passport. It is issued to the central and state government officials during their visit abroad for a limited time. Now the color of this passport is of white or gray. Third, diplomatic passport is issued to diplomats during their posting abroad and provides immunity to the holder. It is red and maroon in color. Fourth, special passport. It is issued to prominent personalities representing India abroad. Let us learn about the types of international passports. One, the normal passport. It is issued to ordinary citizens by a country. Second, diplomatic or consulate passport. It is issued to the diplomats or ambassadors. Third, international Red Cross passport. It is issued only to the Red Cross officials. Fourth, Lasse Passe is issued to its officials by the United Nations. Fifth, Nase is issued by different recognized international organizations. Sixth, Children's Identity Card. It is issued in Japan to the children accompanying their parents. Now, what are the different uh, checks in the passport? One, identity, nationality, type of passport, validity, special endorsement, emigration clearance required and emigration clearance not required. Now, another regulation related to international travel is visa. Now, the full form of visa is visit intended stay abroad. Visa is a kind of endorsement in the passport granting permission to the passport holder to visit the country granting visa. These are issued 
by respective embassies on applying through prescribed form and remittance of fees. There are different types of visas. One, tourist visa issued for short duration for the purpose of tourism activity. Second, immigrant visa issued for longer duration with permission at work. Third, diplomatic visa issued to diplomats holding diplomatic passport. Fourth, business visa issued to industrialists attending meetings, conferences, etc. Fifth, student visa, it is issued to a specific academic calendar year offered with or without permission of work. Sixth, transit visa, it is issued for a period less than 24 hours permitting to go outside and return once. Seventh, single that is lapses with one time entry and exit and multiple entry visa which can be used for entry and exit numerous times in a specified period of time. Eighth type is the Schengen visa. It is a short stay visa that allows a person to travel to any members of the Schengen area per stays up to 90 days for tourism or business purposes. Schengen area covers 26 European Union countries. Ninth type of visa is emergency visa issued during the emergency period. So now these were the two regulations regarding passport and visa. Let us learn about the other regulations which are required uh, to be known for international travel. It is health regulation. It is mandatory for anyone traveling abroad to get vaccinated as prescribed by World Health Organization and a WTO format signed by the competent authority. There is another regulation related to baggage that is baggage regulation. Now baggage consists of personal belongings of a person traveling abroad. Baggage is divided under two heads, check baggage and uncheck baggage. Check baggage is also called registered baggage as it is registered and left with the airlines to be delivered at the destination. Unchecked baggage also known as cabin baggage is permitted inside the aircraft. However, there are certain specification related to the size of the checked in baggage. Currency regulation is another that is required for international travel. Now for currency regulation, Reserve Bank of India governs the currency regulations in India. There are two schemes for Indian passengers as per the latest rules and regulations of RBI. One is 
basic travel quota an indian tourist traveling abroad can carry foreign exchange worth 10000 us dollars per calendar year per person however no foreign exchange is available for visit to nepal and or bhutan for any purpose another is business quota for business trips 25000 us dollar per trip per person is allowed to any country other than nepal and bhutan visits in connection with attending of an international conference seminar specialized training study tour apprentice training etc are treated as business visits visit abroad for medical treatment and or check up also falls within this category another travel requirement for outbound and inbound tourism is travel insurance now travel insurance is a type of insurance that covers the costs and losses associated with traveling it is useful protection for those traveling within the country or abroad frequently it is sold as a package travel insurance may include several types of coverage the main categories of travel insurance include trip cancellation or interruption coverage baggage and personal effects coverage medical expense coverage it also covers accidental death or flight accident damage to personal property rented equipment uh rented equipments like if you are renting a car or even the cost of paying a ransom is also covered under the travel insurance 24 by 7 emergency services such as replacing lost passports cash wire assistance and rebooking cancelled flights are also covered in the travel insurance now learners let us learn about the visa regulations for the inbound tourists visa uh, is an essential requirement for people of all nationalities for entering india except citizens of nepal and bhutan there are several kinds of visa which are available to foreign nationals they are india has introduced e visa in fact it was tourist visa on arrival which was introduced in the year 2010 and now it has been transformed into e visa this is to promote tourism in india now e visa or e tourist e visa has many categories it is e tourist visa e business visa e medical visa e medical attendant visa and e conference visa so now the tourist can avail e visa facility for entering into india for different purposes apart from e visa india has various other visas tourist visa now tourist visa is for individual tourist it is for group tourist it is for cruise tourism that tourist visa is being given visa is also being given 
to foreign nationals for medical purposes which is termed as medical visa. Under this also we have two categories that is for the treatment the foreign nationals are coming as well as it is for the attendants who are accompanying the patient that is the medical attendant visa. There are other types of visas being offered to the foreign nationals like transit visa, business visa, mountaineering visa, student visa, research visa etc. The applicant will apply for the broad category of visa and the granting officer will decide exact subcategory applicable. Now, Indian consular offices in different countries issue the Indian visa. The visa fee for the tourist visa vary between countries according to the arrangement between governments. The current fee for US citizens is $160 for up to 10 years. Some countries such as Japan, Mongolia have special agreements with India that allow their citizens to pay significantly less for a visa. Citizens of Argentina, Cook Island, Fiji, Indonesia, Jamaica, Marshall Islands, Mauritius, Ragwe, etc. do not have to pay a visa fee. There are other countries also which I have not mentioned but we will give you the list. The duration, the maximum duration for which tourist visas are issued is 180 days but if a visa is issued for a lesser duration and an applicant application for the extension of the same is made within 180 days, no extra fee is charged. The only requirement is submission of a set of identical passport photographs. There is also the provision for the extension of visa beyond 180 days, but this is exceptionally operated. In such cases, then the fee charged varies within a fixed scale. Visas can be renewed in all state capitals and district headquarters on an application made to the district police chief, commissioner of police, senior superintendent of police or superintendent of police. Visa renewals and extension cases in the cities of New Delhi, Mumbai and Kolkata are handled by foreigners regional registration offices. In Chennai, the chief immigration officer deals with such cases. The outbound travellers will seek visas from the embassies, consulates of respective countries they intend to visit. Most of these offices are located in New Delhi. Now learners, let us learn about the special permits. Normally, there is no restriction on Indian and foreign nationals for movement within India. Every foreigner except a citizen of Bhutan who desires to enter and stay in a protected or restricted area is required to obtain a special permit from a competent authority delegated with powers to issue such a special permit to a foreigner on application in the prescribed form. Under the Foreigners Protected Areas Order 1958, 
all areas falling between the inner line as defined in the said order and the international border of the state have been declared as protected area. Protected areas are located in the following states which I am mentioning whole of Arunachal Pradesh, parts of Himachal Pradesh, parts of Jammu and Kashmir, whole of Manipur, whole of Mizoram, whole of Nagaland, parts of Rajasthan, whole of Sikkim, partly Sikkim is in protected area and partly in restricted area and lastly parts of Uttarakhand. As per instructions issued by the Ministry of Home Affairs on 30th December 2010, the entire area of the states of Manipur, Mizoram and Nagaland has been excluded from the protected area regime notified under the Foreigners Protected Area Order 1958. It was initially for a period of one year which was extended from time to time. Now this relaxation has been extended till the year 2022 subject to certain conditions. Under the Foreigners Restricted Areas Order 1963, the following areas have been declared as restricted areas, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, the entire Union Territory has been included in the restricted area, Sikkim, part of the state are coming under the restricted area. Now this was related to the special permits that are required for these states that I have mentioned under the uh, restricted and the protected areas. Now further another regulation with international travel is custom regulations. Free import by non-residents is only permitted if they enter India or a stay of not less than 24 hours, not more than 6 months and not more than once a month. The 100 cigarettes or 25 cigars or 125 grams of tobacco, 2 liters of alcoholic liquor or wine, 2 ounces of perfume, goods for personal use etc. are allowed into the country. The, there is no restriction into the foreign currencies brought into the country. However, amounts exceeding 5000 US dollars or equivalent in cash or 10,000 US dollars or equivalent in travellers checks must be declared. Goods in excess of the maximum permitted amount will be subject to an import duty of 60%. In this unit we have covered certain regulations related to the inbound and outbound travel. And this learners for tourism growth, the countries should have easier exit and entry formalities. Definitely we should not compromise on the safety and security of the tourist, but we should facilitate the tourist so that he has a good experience into the destination visited. Thank you.